Welcome to the Small Business Tax Savings Podcast, powered by Jetro. Each week, we bring extremely valuable accounting and tax tips specific to small business owners. You will be on your way to growing your business and putting more money in your pockets. Here's your host. Hello, small business owners, and welcome back to another episode. I am your host and founder of Jetro, Mike Jezoshek. And today's topic is on how do I read a balance sheet and why is it important? Now, before we get into that, this episode is brought to you by Jetro, a digital accounting firm servicing business owners around the country, helping them relieve stress around financials and save thousands in taxes. Again, today's topic is on how do I read a balance sheet and why is it important? And you'll notice if you've been listening for the past few weeks, this is part six in our All About Bookkeeping series. So if you missed our first five episodes or articles, um, check them out. We first started with what is bookkeeping and why do I need bookkeeping for my business? What are bookkeeping debits, credits, and the chart of accounts? What is cash versus accrual accounting? What is an income statement versus a balance sheet? How do I read an income statement and why is it important? And then again, today we're going to talk about how do I read a balance sheet and why is it important? So first off, I just want to kind of recap, what is a balance sheet? Basically, a balance sheet shows the financial condition of your business on a specific date and time. So items found on the balance sheet include a listing of your assets, your liabilities, and your equity. Again, a balance sheet is a specific date and time. So end of the month, September 30th, um, October 15th. It's one specific date. It's not a period of dates. It's one date in time. And the balance sheet tells you essentially what you own, what you owe, and what's left over. So we want to talk about those different pieces or different parts of a balance sheet. And in the show notes, I'm going to include a, a link to an article of ours that has a sample balance sheet that you might want to look at just to kind of follow along and see what a what a, a, a rough example of a balance sheet looks like. But there's, again, we talked about the assets, liabilities, and equity. So I want to talk about these different parts of the balance sheet. Let's start with assets. And this represents the things you own. So anything in assets could include cash on hand, which would be checking accounts, savings accounts. It can include office equipment or machinery that you might buy. It includes accounts receivable or essentially what others owe you. It includes investments that you might have if you have a brokerage account within your business. And it also includes inventory and and things that you're holding in inventory and the various processes of that inventory. So those are assets, things that you own. The next part of the balance sheet is liabilities. In this area represents what you owe. And so things that are in the liability section would be uh, credit cards, accounts payable, or people that you owe, um, loans payable, sales tax that's outstanding that still needs to pay, be paid, um, employee benefits. If you, let's say you you fund retirement accounts on a quarterly basis, then every time you run payroll, you would have a liability on your balance sheet showing, hey, we, we still owe X amount of dollars to um, the employee benefit company. So these are liabilities. They represent what you owe. And then equity. This is the part that can kind of be confusing. This area basically just shows what's what you have invested in the company, what you've taken out of the company, and what's left over. So typically the equity section includes current year earnings, owner's contribution or money you put into the business, owner's draw or money you took out of the business, and then retained earnings. And retained earnings is basically a running trail, a running number of the profit that you've earned or lost over the years, less any kind of distributions that you might have taken. So those are the three main parts of a balance sheet, assets, liabilities, and equity. Now, if you remember from a couple episodes ago, we talked about the accounting equation where assets have to equal liabilities plus equity. And this is where it really comes into play when we're looking at a balance sheet. If you have $10,000 in assets, that means that liabilities plus equity we need to add up to $10,000. If not, you have something wrong. Now, when we think about assets and liabilities specifically, there's kind of two different types of of sections within those. We have short-term or long-term. 
Short term, also called current, can be both an asset or a liability. So you can have a short term or current asset or a short term or current liability. And typically items that you keep in as a short term or current are items that you have for less than a year or that are liquid if we're talking about assets. So assets would be if you plan to get rid of this item or you have the ability to get rid of this item within a year, that would likely be a current asset. Um, example, would be cash, inventory, um, things like that, savings accounts. Now, long-term or also known as non-current are items that you're going to be holding for more than a year. So you can have both assets and liabilities that are long-term or non-current. And some examples of this might be a loan payable. Typically, those are going to be more, longer than a year. If you have computer equipment or office equipment, those are going to be longer than a year. So um, when you're looking at assets and liabilities, we have further distinguishing where we talk about short-term or current assets or liabilities. And then we also have long-term or non-current assets or liabilities. So let's use a quick example. Let's say that you purchased $10,000 in office furniture and take out a six-month loan. You would book that initial purchase of that office furniture as a non-current asset because, again, it's office furniture. You're going to have it for a while. But then you're also going to offset that asset booking with a short-term or current liability. Since you only have a six-month loan that you took out on this, it's going to be paid back in less than a year. So you're going to have a non-current asset to book the office equipment, and then you're going to have a current liability or short-term liability for the loan payable that you plan to pay back in six months or, or within six months. So those are the different sections or parts of a balance sheet. Now I want to talk about why is a balance sheet important and what can you do with the information from the balance app, from the balance sheet. And you know really I want to start off by just saying the balance sheet along with the income statement, these two collide and work very well together, um, give you a full understanding of the health of your business. So you cannot tell how well your business is doing simply by looking at the income statement. It leaves a lot of questions, a lot of unanswered items. The balance sheet will give you deep insights as to how liquid you are. If you shut the door today, where would you be? Would you have money left over? Would you owe money to others? If another pandemic or other industry disaster hits, how long can your business survive with revenues at 50% or revenues at 10%? These are items that the balance sheet can illustrate to you, but the income statement wouldn't be able to tell you. If a coronavirus hit, the income statement's not going to tell you how much cash you have on hand. It's not going to tell you how many assets you can sell off. It's not going to tell you all these loans that you have outstanding. That's what the balance sheet's going to tell you. So again, Last week, we talked about the income statement. The income statement and the balance sheet go hand in hand. They should be two reports that are married together, always always combined. Um, another tip with the balance sheet, and just like the income statement, is to utilize comparative periods. It's best to compare periods to prior periods because this can show you how you are progressing over time. Are the things that you own increasing or getting bigger? And are the things that you owe to other people getting smaller? Are you paying off loans or bringing more on? And, you know, one thing we can look at is bringing on debt in a business is not necessarily a bad thing. But looking at the financial healthiness of that, what does that debt bring with you on the asset side? That can really give you a clear picture and also tells you how much debt you have in comparison. The next thing I want to talk about is ratios. And so there's a lot of different ratios that you can run um, to see the performance of your business, to see, compare to industry standards, kind of where you should be. So the balance sheet is really helpful to utilize ratios where you can do different equations. But I want to talk about three main ones that we often see with clients. The current ratio, the quick ratio, and the debt to equity ratio. And these ratios are often done together or very similar. So the current ratio is simply taking your current assets divided by your current liabilities. And it answers the question of, can I pay my debts? The higher that ratio, the better. Now, the quick ratio takes your current assets, but then subtracts out inventories, inventory and prepaid items, and then divides it by current liabilities. And this is basically the same thing as the current ratio, but now we're taking out inventories and some prepaid items. And this ratio basically tells us how capable we are to pay off our short-term liabilities 
with basic cash and cash equivalents. So this tells us how capable are we to pay off liabilities without having to go off and sell a bunch of inventory that we maybe don't want to, but just by utilizing our cash or cash equivalents. So that's the quick ratio, very similar to the current, but just giving us a better clear idea of how we can pay off our short-term liabilities with cash. And then you have the debt to equity, which is liabilities divided by shareholders' equity. And this ratio tells you how much your business depends on debt to continue normal operations versus using equity or current operations slash owner's investment. So in this one, you're looking for a low number. And the higher that number gets, it tells you that if you had to pay back your debt, it would likely use up all your earnings and cash flow to be able to do that. So these are ratios. There's tons of different ratios that you can run to help analyze your business, compare yourself. And this is going to be especially handy if you're in looking to sell your business or looking for really high comparison items. You know, I also want to encourage you to analyze. Now that you 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 have you're doing this bookkeeping, analyze and consult if you need to. You want to be a good you want to be sure that you have a good grasp on your balance sheet. This is an area that we often see the most mistakes in when clients are doing their own bookkeeping. So this is an area that you want to make sure you're understanding and doing it correctly. Making a profit is no doubt important. However, just as important as understanding what you own and who you owe. And if you're looking to make an investment into a piece of equipment or marketing plan, you'll want to analyze your balance sheet to ensure that you can take on additional debt if that's needed. The banks are going to require balance sheets. If you're looking to sell, you're going to require some balance sheets and analysis of them. And so, again, this the getting a full financial picture is what the balance sheet does. The, the balance sheet is no better than the income statement. The income statement is no better than the balance sheet. These two together will give you a clear, really good financial picture of where you are. And, you know, I always say, if you feel like you're flying by the seat of your pants or you feel like you don't have a good grip on your bookkeeping or your understanding the financial statements, reach out to someone. Reach out to someone that can reel that in for you, can help you understand that and get you on the right path. And reach out to us if, if, if you would like a consultation on that as well. Now, some final items related to balance sheet. Um, accrual versus cash. You'll remember we talked about uh, cash versus accrual accounting a couple weeks back. You can run a balance sheet using both of these methods, using both of these methods. But just remember that cash basis is when you record activity as cash is interchanged. And on an accrual basis, you report activity as it occurs, as it occurs, regardless of whether money is received or spent. So you can run a, a, a cash basis or an accrual basis balance sheet. But just note, if you run a cash basis balance sheet, you will see no accounts receivable and no accounts payable because those are items that are not moved around with cash. Um, asset purchases and depreciation. Remember that major asset purchases go to the balance sheet. And then they are depre depreciated, which is when you're allowed to take that expense on the income statement. So let's say you purchase a truck for 50 grand. You're going to book that initially to the balance sheet as an asset, vehicle asset. Then depending on the depreciation method, you will expense it over time. And you're going to be taking depreciation expense during that, which is when it hits the income statement. And then you're going to offset the asset with accumulated depreciation which hits the balance sheet. So that value for that truck on the balance sheet will be the original asset purchase price, that $50,000, less any kind of accumulated depreciation. This would be a depreciation that was taken on the income statement. The offset to that is showing it on the balance sheet as accumulated depreciation, which is a, which is a contra asset. Um, owners draws and distributions. Remember, if you're taking money from the business as an owner, that is not processed through payroll. So if you're taking money out, just transferring money from your business account to your personal account, generally that's a, an owner's draw or a distribution, and this is not an expense to the business. Instead, it's going to show up in that equity section of the balance sheet. And the same is true as if you contribute money to your business. This is not income to the business. Instead, it would show up in that owner's contribution section of, or owner's contribution, it would show up as an owner's contribution in the equity section of the balance sheet. So uh, if, if you're taking payroll uh, as, a, as a, maybe you're an S corp and you're taking a reasonable salary, those items would be expenses. It's just the owner's dividends or owner's distributions or owner's draws that you're taking over and above that that are not expenses. Instead, 
they're taking on the balance sheet along with owner's contributions. And again, as a reminder with the loans, when you take out a business loan, that goes directly to the balance sheet as a liability related item. When you make payments against that loan, it's just going to reduce that liability on the balance sheet. Um, so if you have a $10,000 loan, you make a $1,000 payment, that loan on the balance sheet is going to say $9,000 now. If there's any interest portion of loan payments, that's the item that hits the income statement. So the interest portion will hit the income statement. The actual principal will reduce the loan balance on the balance sheet. So I wanted to go through kind of a quick, simple balance sheet example to help give kind of put this into place. So we're going to talk about four different facts. You open up a bank account with $1,000 that you put in of your own money. Then you take out a loan to buy a $7,000 piece of equipment. And then throughout the course of the month or the year, you receive income of $15,000 and spend $5,000 on expenses and you're profiting $10,000. Then finally, you take out $2,000 out of the business to cover some personal expenses. So we want to look at how does this affect the balance sheet? Let's start with assets. You have cash. So you put $1,000 into the bank account of your own money. So cash goes up $1,000. You received income of $15,000. So cash goes up another $15,000. You had expenses of $5,000. So cash goes down $5,000. And then you took $2,000 out of the business as an owner's draw. So minus $2,000 in cash. So cash would be $1,000 plus $15,000 minus $5,000 minus $2,000 for $9,000. So that's cash. That's part of an asset. That'd be a current asset. Then you have equipment. We bought that $7,000 piece of equipment. That's going to be an asset. So that's going to be a long-term or non-current asset. So then that's $7,000. Next, we have liabilities. Now, remember, we took out a loan to buy that piece of equipment. So we're going to have a liabilities or a loan payable of that $7,000. This is going to be a non-current, assuming that that loan is going to be paid off um, longer than a year. So it's going to be a non-current loan payable. And then we have equity. We have owner's contribution. You put $1,000 into the business bank account. That's an owner's contribution. We have owner's draw. You took $2,000 out of the business bank account for owner's draw. And then we have current year earnings which was the $15,000 income minus the $5,000 in expenses, and that equals $10,000. So that's the equity section. So if we look at this, we have assets of $16,000, we have liabilities of $7,000, and we have total equity of $9,000. Now note, when we talked about the accounting equation, assets equals liabilities plus equity. Assets are 16 Liabilities are seven and equity is nine. So you'll see assets in this e example equal liabilities plus equity. So that's just a quick example of how these items affect hitting your balance sheet. And this article is meant to give you, um, this episode is meant to give you a deeper look into the balance sheet. Next week, we're going to be diving into some finan final financial statements and look at some things that are over and above the income statement and balance sheet that might be useful in your business. So again, just wanted to do a quick overview. The balance sheet is a sp one specific date and time, and it tells you what you own, what you, who you owe, and what's left over. The different parts of a balance sheet are assets, liabilities, and equity. And there's various different things. The, the balance sheet really gives you a clear financial health of your business and should be used in combination with the income statement. If you missed our income statement episode, check out um, last week and, and get up to speed there. So I hope this was helpful for you. If you have questions about bookkeeping, the financial statements, we have a few more episodes left in our All About Bookkeeping series. But once we're done with that, we're going to hold a panel series with, with members of our bookkeeping team to answer questions that you guys have around this topic. So if you have any questions, hit us up in the Facebook group, shoot us an email, whatever is the easiest way to get a hold of us. Let me know, and we'll make sure that we add those questions to our panel grouping at the end of this All About Bookkeeping series. Again, this episode was How Do I Read a Balance Sheet and Why Is It Important? And I will see you guys next week. Now, one last thing before I go. Don't forget to check out our podcast website at www.jetrotax.com. Simply click Resources and then Podcast, where you can go there and check out our past episodes. 
Also, don't forget to join our free bookkeeping training program and free Facebook group. I've provided links to both of these in the show notes below. This has been another episode of the Small Business Tax Savings Podcast from the team at Jetro. If you enjoy our weekly episodes, please leave a review on whatever platform you listen to us on and share with other business owners. If you have any questions or future topics you want to hear, email them to tax at jetrotax.com. Thanks for listening and have a great day.